Welcome back. This is Defender Chassis. My name's Scott. Today's project is a header repair. We're going to do this video in two parts. First part will be the driver's side and the second part will be the passenger side. What we've got here is a header for a 2013 Camaro with a big block Chevy. Now I know what you're thinking. 2013 Camaro didn't have a big block in it. And in fact, when this car was sold, all you could get was a V6. What happened here was somebody went and bought him a brand new Camaro off the, off the dealer lot and took it home and tore it apart and made a drag car out of it. As part of that, they needed to find a set of headers. Of course, headers for that application were not available. So what they did was they took a set of headers. These are hookers. I'm not sure what the original application is but they made a couple of modifications so that they would work in the 2013 Camaro. One of those modifications is a notch in this rear tube on the driver's side to clear the steering shaft. And I'm gonna assume that this dent here was also put in for the same reason. <coughs> now, in addition to that, for some reason, this uh, number three tube had to be modified as well. And you can see that along with that dent that the construction was not um, not nearly as nice as the original tubes. So what we're going to do with the number three tube is go ahead and, and cut it off down here and cut it off above this dent and we're going to rework that tube in between those two points. The first step is going to be to go ahead and do the deconstruction. So off camera let me go ahead and get this tube cut out and get this uh, this notch removed and I'll bring you back and show you how we move forward and get these things repaired. Okay, so here we are after some deconstruction. I simply used a Sawzall with um, a metal cutting blade, one of these and removed uh, that section of tube. Now, <laughs> to get a straight line, what I did was took a straight piece of cardboard and wrapped it around the tube and marked, marked the tube so I had something to follow. Now, I was not able to do that on, on this tube because of its proximity to the, uh, the others, and I may have to deal with a little bit of an odd cut, but uh, that's not too big of a problem. Now, <laughs> That dent that was here uh, actually progressed a little farther up the tube than what, where, where I cut it. So what I'm going to end up doing is using a uh, tubing expander and going up in there and um, returning this tube to, uh, to round. Well, that's not odd uh, when, when you work on headers anyway because whenever you do a bend, even a mandrel bent tube, the, the, the bend actually flattens. So. A lot of times when you put a bend, when you weld a bend directly onto a straight section, you have to go and, and, and make the, uh, the end of the bend round again so that you're uh, putting the exact same profiles together. <clears throat> now, I'm saving this piece for last, and I started, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and work on this notch. Now, what I did was I just took a grinder and went around and cut that edge until I got down to where it was, um, relieving itself. And this is the piece that um, that I pulled out. You can see the welding that the guys did before. There was a lot of burn through. There's a piece of MIG wire right there. But anyway, and as the, fur the further I got, the more I could see some of the tubing had actually gotten damaged um, where they'd welded and burnt through and covered it up. And so I had to actually open this up in the, uh, to, to the size that you've got just using a uh, die grinder with a carbide burr on the end. Now what we need to do is cut a patch to go in here. And to do that, what um, we need to do is to, is to make a pattern. So what we're gonna do is take a piece of cardboard and wrap around where that's at, and then take a razor blade and trim out the cardboard where the hole's at. And once we do that, what we've got is something that looks looks like this. And if we, you can see, if we wrap this around, that's an exact reproduction of that hole. 
So now we'll take this, I've got a, a piece of uh, tubing, and we will wrap around that, mark our pattern, and if we cut this out, that should fit right back in, in this hole. We can weld, take welder it around and uh, be in good shape. So let me go ahead and get this thing cut out, get this thing tacked in here, maybe go ahead and finish welding it out, and I'll come back and we'll talk about how we're gonna do this, uh, this other tube and show you what, how this turned out. Okay, here we are. Here's our, here's our newly fashioned piece to fit the um, uh, uh, hole in the tube. Uh, it came out of this piece of tube. What we did was we took a shear like this and just went ahead and, and hacked off half of the tube that we didn't need, put it aside, and then took the balance and went on the Beverly shear and just started trimming this thing around, trying to sneak up on that, um, on that line that we made from the uh, pattern. And from there, then we would then then we went to the belt sander to uh, fine tune that line. And when we got close, and you don't want to you don't want to go go all the way. You want to start looking at it when you when you when you get close. When we got close, we started trying to fit the thing in. And it's not odd for the tubes maybe not to match diameter. Um, this tubing runs off and, and um, you know, from one stick to the next you might have a little bit of variance or in this case where we've got a bend here, this tube was probably f flattened in, the, in this way. So what we had to do was, was um, tweak these edges and pull them out a little bit and get things lined up. And I've got it looking pretty good. But what we're going to do as we weld this is we're going to weld the spots where everything's nice and flush and looks good or I should say tack those spots in place. And then we'll work on the rest of it until we get it uh, where we want it, and then we'll finish weld the thing. And this particular patch, we're gonna, we're gonna grind this smooth when we're done, and hopefully it'll appear as if there was never any damage done here or you know, any, uh, any, any work done at all. On this other tube, we'll leave the weld joints visible, um, just because hopefully they, they, look, they look nice and, and um, don't deter from the uh, aesthetics of the header. So let me get set up to, uh, to get this piece welded in and I'll bring you back and let you see how that turned out. Okay, so here we are, we got this all welded in, got that ground down flush, everything looks pretty good. There is a couple little low spots, but um, some of that's uh, inevitable. I went ahead and started working on getting this other tube fit up, and I think I've got it in pretty good shape. If you remember, this is what we had before, and I've tried to uh, replicate um, the, the uh, routing because it's not the routing that's an issue. Sometimes when we rework these headers, it's because we've got an interference or something of that nature. In this case, it was just a matter of somebody had already done that work and corrected for the interference, but just didn't do a real good, uh, real good job of it. In fact, you can see right here where there was a uh, hole, an incompleted uh, weld. So what I did was <clears throat> I went ahead and, and measured the angle of this tube and uh, started from there and uh, really just got some scraps together and didn't have to use any, uh, any, any new material to make this. It was just out of some leftovers from a previous job. And um, really just um, worked on it trying to um, get it to fit up. Um, sometimes it takes longer than others, uh, but it's just a matter of uh, trial and error for the most part and sneaking up on your cuts. You don't ever want to cut where you think you want to leave a little extra and then check it out and, and make sure you still need it. And uh, sometimes you can, you can change the angle of these tubes and do a little twist here and a twist there and, and uh, get them fit up pretty nice. Now, as far as cutting the angle on these tubes and cutting them square, let me, uh, let me uh, swing you around here and show you a, a tool that I've got. But while I've got you here, let me, let's talk about these uh, clamps. These are just T-bolt clamps. And a lot of guys will use these and just punch a hole in them, and then that way they can actually tack weld through them. Now in this case, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to take one of these clamps off at a time and, and tack weld it, and then um, we'll um, 
pull this off and, and, and do all these welds except the two end ones and then come back and, and put it in and finish it up. But um, let me show you how I cut the angles on the, uh, on the tubes just to, uh, to make sure that you, know, you, get them, you get them square. Let me get you sw swung, swung around here, we'll be right back. Okay, what I've got here is a, a little fixture to put the U-bends in when you use a, a new U-bend. And it's uh, marked out, of course this is specific to the diameter of tube and the radius of the, of the bend. And I've got several of these, but this is the one that uh, is applicable for what we're doing here today. Now you can see I've actually had to, I, I bought these, oh geez, somewhere off somebody on the west coast. I'll, I'll see if I can't find uh, who I got these from and, and uh, post a link on the video below. Uh, but the problem with this is that uh, both sides look like, look like this and I had to modify it because sometimes these U-bends have a longer, a longer leg. So that's what this is all about. But um, what you do, you just set your U-bend in there and if you know you need 40 degrees, then you can look on here and find your line for 40 degrees. And then they come with, um, with these, you actually knock these out when you get them. And uh, there's a little tab right here and a hole and you can put it in that hole. And then you can swing this around until you get the angle you want. Now what I do, is I take a little square and I clamp it to that piece. That way, I know that this piece is standing straight up and down. So anyway, you can put it on here, swing it wherever you want, and then take your Sharpie, mark your line, and then go to the uh, bandsaw and, uh, and make, make your cut. So, that's how we got where we're at right now. Let me go ahead and get this, this section uh, tacked up and welded and uh, I'm not sure how far I'll get before I bring you back but uh, I'll bring you back here in a minute and uh, let you see where, uh, where we're at. Okay, let me bring you back now. Went ahead and got this thing tacked up, pulled it out, got it uh, all welded, put it back in, still fits nice, nothing pulled while it welded. So the next step is to go ahead and get it welded in into uh, the, uh, the headers. You see we got a nice tight fit here and we do it here as well, although it's gonna slip right out on me. But got it all welded. One thing about welding tube on headers. One thing you wanna remember is that these welds, I mean, although you don't want them to break, they're not really a strength weld. They're not really holding anything up. And the bigger concern is flow through the tube. So what you don't want to have happen is what they had happen on, on these tubes. You can see that this old piece that we took off down here in the bottom that um, they have got some buildup in there where they burnt, uh, burnt through. So what you want to do when you weld these is you, what you would rather do rather than getting a full penetration is, is actually just put a cap on it. And what I do is lay the filler rod right on top of the uh, crack and then just weave over the top of it back and forth and, and melt it in. So you're actually not trying to, to seal that gap. Now a lot of times you'll do that anyway. Um, and it looks like I've done that on these. But what you don't want to have happen is have it burn through and then have a big booger sticking on the inside because at some point you're not going to be able to get back in here and clean these things up. So, the next step to getting this thing welded in is getting the tubes cleaned up and ready to go. And the tough spot here, although both ends are going to be challenging, I think I can get to this end from each side although we won't have a real good angle on the tungsten, I think I can get it. So we're not gonna worry about that one. But on this end right here, we're not gonna be able to get to this back side because it's got this tube right up against it. So what I'm gonna do is take my Sawzall or port -a band or I'm not sure yet, and we're gonna cut a, a, a pie section out of this tube. And what that'll allow me to do is go in from the top and actually weld from say right here 
all the way over to here, I don't know, that's about 100, 100, 110 degrees of the circumference of that from the inside. And then I'll pick the weld up on the outside, just make sure I get burn in good enough, and then, and then finish the weld on the outside. And then, of course, we'll have to put that section back in. Now, I won't cut that and just run it all the way out so it's got a sharp point on it because that makes a tough spot for the end. So we'll go so far and then we'll pull the, the saw out and then we'll come in and make a straight cut. So that way we're, we're coming around and then straight section and then back. But I'll let you see that before, uh, before I, I, I weld it up. So let me, let me get that taken care of and let's get this tack back in and then I'll bring you back and let you take a look at that, what that looks like, all right? Be right back. Okay, so here we are. Got this tube uh, welded in with the exception of uh, this piece we had to cut out to get access to do part of this circumferential weld from the, uh, from the inside. Everything turned out pretty well. It was a little difficult in uh, this area right here to, um, to get back in there, but one thing I don't know if I mentioned before, one thing that I'm using is a gas lens. If you don't have one of these and you want to do this kind of work, it uh, sure does uh, help out quite a bit. What it allows you to do is to, um, to uh, pull your tungsten out. I mean, I wouldn't be afraid to, uh, you know, depending upon where you're at. You know, if you, even if you're in a position like inside this tube, you can actually go ahead and, and kick the pedal and let some gas flow and kind of get a purge in there if you've got an area like this where it's shielded and uh, stick that tungsten way, way, way out there if you need to. I and mean, you shouldn't do it all the time, but if you need to, to uh, get into those uh, tight, tight areas. Uh, your angle is usually not good, but um, if it's your only option, it's your only option. So, anyway, anything left to do to go ahead and finish up this side here is to uh, get this uh, patch welded, uh, welded back in. So let me go ahead and get that done and um, I'll be right back and show you what the finished product looks like. Talk about uh, part two of this video. Here we are all finished up. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. Now on the part two of this video series, on the passenger side header, we're basically gonna do the same thing to two tubes that we did to this one on this third, third tube back. The difference will be that that tube will likely be replaced all the way to the flange because the damage on those tubes is so far up into this bend that it wouldn't be worth uh, saving, saving all this. So in addition, because I think I brushed over it a little too much in part one, I'm gonna show you a little more detail on how I actually fit these tubes and, and what, uh, what I go through. So it'll, it'll slow the video down a little bit, but it'll give you some more details if uh, you're still not sure how to, uh, to go about fitting, fitting all these bins. So, hey, if you like the video, Please uh, hit like if uh, you're watching it uh, somewhere embedded like Facebook or um, uh, in a, embedded in a forum. Please go down here and follow the little YouTube symbol to the YouTube page and you can like it there. And while you're there, if you want to subscribe, that way you'll get notified of uh, when the next video pops up. That'd be great as well. So listen, appreciate you watching and uh, I'll see you on uh, part two, I guess. Thanks. Thanks.